Anybody who's been paying any attention at all to Porsche's communication over the last couple of years internationally would have done very well not to know about this car because it's been everywhere. But precious little has been discussed about this model here in Australia and maybe not enough is known about what the real inspiration was for the creation of this car, the 935. As we well know, Porsche conquered Le Mans for the very first time overall in 1970. And over the ensuing years, the 917, the car that won that event, became redundant as the FIA changed the rules. Porsche had to innovate and find new ways. And one of those big campaigns was the adoption of 911-based touring cars that would go on to dominate Group 4 and Group 5, and ultimately, again, win Le Mans overall. The 935, was the brainchild of many people at Porsche, but most passionately, that of Norbert Singers. It was a homologation special to an extent, but as the end of the 70s loomed and new rules came into force, Porsche took an opportunity to reinterpret these rules and come up with a car which would literally push the edge of the envelope in every direction. Most notably in aerodynamics, Norbert Singer's pet idea had always been to reduce the frontal area of the 911. And he achieved this with the 935 by developing a flat nose and relocating the headlamps into the front bar. This became known as Flachbau and became part of what has defined 911 special editions of the 1970s, the very famous flat nose. But in racing terms, the car that was about to be born for the 1978 racing season was something completely new aerodynamics would play the biggest part. Elongation of the tail and the nose for stability at the 350 kilometers an hour that this car would be capable of became paramount. For the year 1978, the ultimate incarnation of the 935 was what the team was going to work on. And ultimately, the reinterpretation of new rules that were issued by the FIA allowed the possibility for Porsche to once again dominate Le Mans, but this time with a car based on the 911. Its elongation in the tail, that flat nose, headlamps hidden in the front wings, with bigger wheels and aerodynamic undertones everywhere that would not only decrease drag but increase downforce, basically came up with what was the car's nickname, Moby Dick, after the main character in the novel. This car would go on to be famous for a couple of reasons. Porsche did so much to change this car and optimise it for winning Le Mans. Things such as lowering the body 100 millimetres on the chassis, relocating the driver from the left to the right to help with the clockwise south circuit in France, weight distribution and the ability to see backward. Turning the gearbox upside down to reduce the stress on the drive shafts were just a small number of the incredible modifications made to ensure that this car would go on to have a fighting chance to win the race. But aerodynamics was not enough in the 935 to develop the sort of horsepower that would contend with the rest of the competition in the field. Porsche really needed to work very, very hard on a horsepower output and reliability. This was the first time that the break with tradition took place, where the engine in the tail of a 911 was no longer completely air-cooled. This was the advent of water cooling for the heads. Four valves per cylinder and the strain placed upon the aluminium in the heads demanded that water cooling would take place just in the heads where air cooling was still utilised for the crankcase. This was an incredibly highly stressed racing unit, but what it came down to was power outputs between 750 and 850 horsepower. And as I said, 350 kilometres an hour down the Mulsanne. This was an incredible car and certainly one would argue the most incredible development of a 911 road car. In June 1979, Porsche were yet again successful overall at Le Mans. And again, after that success, the rules changed and the 935 was no longer an eligible car that could compete on a stage where it was likely to take first class honours. The engine from Moby Dick, with its famous water-cooled heads and air-cooled crankcase, went on to become the basis of the 956 and the 962 thereafter. Though those cars, being prototypes, had no resemblance to anything that you could walk into a Porsche Centre globally and purchase for yourself. The character and the excessive development of the 911 as a racing car had yet again come to an end.
40 years after that great victory at Le Mans, Porsche have concocted enough reasons, inspiration and passion to come up with this car, the new 935. All of the effort that went into this car, from its mechanicals to its carbon fibre reinforced plastic outer bodywork, was all for fun. The car does not correlate to any book of FIA rules whatsoever. This car was not intended to run and win any series or any specific race. This car was intended to be possibly the most elaborate and most fun track day car that money could buy. The original 935 Moby Dick was based on a conglomeration of 911 parts and bits and pieces and ideas. Similarly, the new 935 is based upon a production 911, but in this case, the most powerful series production 911 of all time, the 991 generation GD2 RS. 700 horsepower is delivered consistently and reliably. The GD2 RS's power pack behind the rear axle of the 935 with four camshafts, 24 valves, a pair of turbochargers and full water cooling gives the 935 an inherent ability to do what it does reliably time and time again. Vario Cam Plus variable valve phasing and camshaft timing also managed to make this car as drivable on the road if it were registrable as a GT2 RS. The carbon fibre reinforced plastic bodywork elongated in the rear is what helps this car achieve almost 300 millimetres extra length compared to the GT2 RS that it's based on. And then in this incredibly aggressive rear section where we have an extended diffuser in carbon fibre that covers the focal point megaphone exhaust in titanium, absolutely reminiscent of those on the 9083, the car that Porsche was phenomenally successful with in the 60s at events like the Targa Florio. And in this rear wing of nearly two metres of width with 40 centimetres of downforce depth, end plates borrowed directly from the 919 hybrid, you can see that the intent with downforce and reduction of drag is no different to the original cars. Everything combines on this car to say one thing, which is the intent of racing, even though that wasn't the point. Familiarity abounds with a glass house and door panel that are just the same as any other 911, pretty much the only parts of the external skin which are directly recognisable, albeit with a carbon fibre bonded in roof panel and FIA hatch, carbon fibre skin on the door and rear side mirrors which are borrowed straight off the 911 RSR. Norbert Singer's original idea to reduce the frontal area in the 911 in the mid 70s by relocating what were its original circular headlamps into the front bumper and developing the flat nose that we've talked about has been taken yet a step further in the 935. The entire bonnet and guard line basically take on one profile, giving the car an attitude of absolute wind cheating, downforce generating ability. As is the case in Porsche's road-going sports cars, this is no different. The theory of thermal management and the job of basically getting as much cool air in and warm air out via the perforations in the body whilst not creating any more turbulence in the airstream has been achieved in a super dramatic fashion. Reminiscent as it might be, one of the great visual distinctions and features of Moby Dick were its fared in wheels. Yet again, Porsche seeking to eliminate any possible source of drag. The 935 comes with these magnificent carbon fibre wheel covers, which when fitted, reduce any disturbance around the wheel houses. As one would expect, the cockpit is no less business-like than this car's exterior dominated by a huge safety cage with very thick gauge tubing, pair of racing seats, and then under that Racetex wrapped dash top, the colour display from the 911 GT3R and the same carbon fibre steering wheel, and then one final nod to the past, a laminated timber shift lever reminiscent of the 917 and the 909 Bergspider. 
And so we've discussed the 935 in its constitution, both mechanically, aerodynamically, and in principle. 77 units of this car were constructed as a tribute, a gift, so to speak, to Porsche's motorsport fans the world over. It neither had to comply with FIA rules or had to be homologated as a road car in any market around the world. It was literally designed by a free hand of engineers and stylists with a passion for motor racing, the very same passion that keeps everybody so in love with the brand.